If you have a story to share about Sioux Falls, an online publishing company wants to hear from you. Belt Publishing is putting out a call for authors to write about the city's past as part of a book that will come out next year. Perry Groton spoke to some of the local contributors to this ambitious writing project on tonight's Eye on Kelloland. Senator George McGovern's campaign plane, Dakota Queen 2, touched down. The, the national of political spotlight shined brightly on Sioux Falls back on election night in 1972. Senator George McGovern and his supporters gathered in the city as the voting results came in, showing a landslide victory for President Richard Nixon. McGovern's unsuccessful campaign for the White House still has a strong literary resonance with Augustana University English professor Danny Gerling. Cities like to tell their stories, um, specifically stories of, of uplift and, and, and happy stories, but there are also stories that, that aren't so happy that, that need to be told as well. Um, and it's not like this was entirely negative either. I mean, George McGovern is still a, you know, a statewide hero. Gerling is writing about McGovern's election night in Sioux Falls as part of an anthology delving into the city's past. And we're hoping that when it's published, people will, will buy it and read it and, and find out things they didn't even know about this place they call home. The working title is called The Queen City, a Sioux Falls anthology. The project came together over beers and some brainstorming in downtown Sioux Falls. My co-editor, John Lauk, and I met for beer downtown in Phillips Avenue, and it was his idea. He said, you know, why don't we have the largest city in South Dakota be a part of this? And the more we talked about it, we got out a piece of scrap paper and we started to scribble ideas for topics of this anthology. Blogger Grant Wenzel is writing about Sioux Falls' infamous reputation as the divorce capital of America during the lax residency requirements at the end of the 19th century. So all of a sudden you've got this small prairie town, but you're inundated by dozens, perhaps hundreds, of well-heeled New Yorkers, Bostonians, people from all over, here to live for three months to get that divorce. And while they're here, they had very little to do but spend money and throw parties and have a good time. <laughs> Must have been a fun time to be here. <laughs> Augustana University <laughs> Provost Colin Most Irvin is writing about Columbus College, an early 20th century men's Catholic school which went out of business and is now the site of the VA hospital. Augustana was following a parallel path. We persisted and thrived. And I'm curious as to what happened, right? How, how is it one continued and the other one didn't? But you don't have to be an academic to contribute to this book project. They're also looking for submissions of personal stories of how Sioux Falls has impacted your life. And we're taking, um, uh, I'd call them micro essays, maybe, you know, 250 words, 500 uh, word essays about things that maybe they might remember, like, uh, uh, the, you know, the Western Mall when it opens up or some expansion to the south. You know, we'd be interested in that. We're interested in a limited amount of poetry. Um, we have one person that's writing a short story for us. Hicks says writers have already staked claims to 75% of the book's content. Of all the Midwestern cities featured in this national series, Sioux Falls would be the smallest, but the goal is to leave a big historical impression on readers. I think it's going to be fun and illuminating to find out what those stories were that have been sort of buried in the archaeology of time. With Eye on Kelloland, I'm Perry Groton. Now the book is expected to come out in late 2021. Writers have until December 1st of this year to submit proposals for inclusion in the book. If you have something to offer, just go to this story at Kelloland.com.